It's so nice to be here with you today. So nice to be here with you to pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Won't you please, won't you please, please, won't you pray for your neighbor? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Ascension Sunday. It used to be Ascension Thursday, but they moved it to Sunday some time ago. So this Sunday before Pentecost, we celebrate the Ascension of our Lord. So in this Father Ralph's neighborhood, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means that the Lord went up to heaven and took his place at the right hand of God. What that means for us here and now, uh, 2,000 years later. Let's read the gospel. The gospel today, if you're following along, which I hope you are, is the very end of the gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16. We're going to start reading with the 15th verse and go all the way to the end, verse 20. Jesus said to his disciples, Go throughout the whole world and preach the gospel to all people. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. Believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak to in strange tongues. If they pick up snakes or drink any poison, they will not be harmed. They will place their hands on sick people and these will get well. After the Lord Jesus had talked with them, he was taken up to heaven and sat at the right hand of God. The disciples went and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and proved that their preaching was true by the miracles that were performed. In the Lord, the gospel of our Lord. End of the gospel, but not the end of the story. Mark's gospel ends, and so at the end of his gospel, he wrote very clearly. The disciples got up and they did exactly what Jesus asked them to do, and, and th they did, but Mark makes it seem like, poof, everything was just great. Our first reading at Mass today was from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles is kind of like volume two of the Gospel of St. Luke. So the Gospel of St. Luke, yeah, that ends like the Gospel of Mark ends, but Luke keeps going. And he writes to Theophilus. Theophilus. In other words, he's writing to us. Theophilus means lover of God. So he's basically writing the Acts of the Apostles for all those who love God. And the Acts of the Apostles, when Jesus ascends to heaven, they're all, where are they? Whoa. Oh, we do? And they stood there staring up into the sky. What do we do now? And the angels appeared to them and said, why are you standing there staring up in the sky? Right? Well, in a very real way, the Acts of the Apostles 
describes those earliest days of the church as the disciples figure out what exactly they should be doing. Jesus gave them very clear directions. I liken the beginning of the church to learning how to play chess. Uh, my brother Herman is the one who introduced me to chess. And oh, he loves chess. Uh, he'll take <clears throat> uh, relatively inexpensive chess sets that you can buy, plastic chess sets, from, and he'll hand paint the pieces. And oh, it's so beautiful. But the thing about chess, if you've ever learned to play, you know the rules are pretty simple. You can learn very quickly how to move the pieces and how the game works. You know, the queen can go anywhere she wants to, right? Uh, and and uh, pawns can do this. They can... So you can learn how the game works, what the rules are, but then spend the rest of your life learning to play chess well and that's the challenge of chess well it's also the challenge of our faith the rules are very simple go out baptize all peoples in the name of the father and of the son of the holy spirit and um know that i will be with you always even to the end of the world and then he's gone so we have spent the last 2,000 years and again as you look through the Acts of the Apostles you see how tricky those first years were and those are just the first years we've been we, oh my goodness the the history of the church is just full of all of the work that all of the people who tried their best to find. Did Jesus, didn't leave us an instruction book. He didn't say, now, look, you're going to have this guy called the Pope. And the Pope's going to make a college of cardinals so that when he dies, they can pick the next one. And the, the cardinals and the Pope will make bishops. And the bishops will be like the apostles. And they will teach. They will teach the scriptures. They will be the teaching authority of the church. And the church is going to get so big that you're going to have deacons to help the bishops. You're going to have priests to help the bishops. And uh, this is going to hit. Oh, by the way, here's the code of canon law. Here's everything you need to know. He didn't give us, he just gave us a simple set of rules, of course, love one another as I have loved you. All those simple rules, right? Sounds so simple, but we spend our whole lives trying to figure out how to love one another. It's a, I, I don't know about you, but I have wonderful memories of my dad and my mom uh, teaching me uh, the, uh, how to drive. I, uh, dad died when I was only five years old, but one of the moments I will never forget when I was four, three or four, uh, dad got a brand new car, Oldsmobile, Jetstar One, four barrel carburetor, anyway. And I was so excited, daddy, 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 can I drive? You had to know my dad. Dad put me in his lap and put my hands on the steering wheel. This was in the alley, by the way, behind the house. Says, okay, Ralphie, let's go down the alley. And I steered the car, at least I thought I was steering. Actually, his hands were on the wheel too. And of course, my little footsies couldn't reach the pedals, so he was working the gas and the brakes. But I'll never forget the first time I drove a car in my father's lap. Well, I wouldn't drive again until driver's education at Bogan. Uh, and uh, my, I'll never forget my gym teacher, Mr. Boland. Oh, what a great, what a great gym teacher. And what a great driving teacher. And uh, 
you know, we went out to the uh, simulators, and of course, in the simulator, first thing you do is get in a horrible accident. I think they do that to scare you so to learn and to drive properly. Uh, but, you know, you learn everything, and then they take you out in the car, and they take you into traffic, and you're, you're finally <clears throat> ready to go and get your license. Mom was thrilled because mom did not like to drive. She, she just, she just didn't, you know, uh, it's funny. She'd tell the story of how she'd be at a stoplight and a car of young men would pull up next to her thinking, you know, oh, who's driving this fantastic jet star one, you know, and they'd look over and be totally disappointed because it was my mom was driving me, you know, it's like those insurance commercials where they take off and mom's just, you know, so she was so happy when I got my driver's license and we went to the hardware store and she bought a ignition key that had the Oldsmobile emblem on it and she bought a key fob that had the Oldsmobile emblem on it and she gave me that as my own personal set of keys to the family car. And whenever possible, I was the chauffeur. I would drive. I would drive mom. I would drive Mamu. And we would go where, where mom didn't go far. She didn't, you know, but she, she trusted the car to me. And uh, little by little, I started pushing the envelope. And uh, the car was on the expressway. And the car was going all over the place. And again, she was very happy. My brother lived pretty far away, and uh, she uh, loved the fact that I could drive and get us there and uh, for our visits and everything. So what a, what a wonderful, wonderful memory that reminds me that I went from being on my father's lap uh, to where I was wearing the chauffeur's hat and had my own set of keys to the car and was taking mom and mama everywhere, right? It's a good image for what we celebrate today. Jesus takes the apostles to the hardware store and he gives them a set of keys. Not a keys to the car, but keys to the kingdom. Not just keys to the church, keys literally to the kingdom. He says, now you guys have to let people in. You guys have to use those keys to open the doors to the kingdom of heaven. And you're going to do that by preaching my good news everywhere. And letting people know uh, that this life is not all that there is. Baptizing. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So here we are, 2,000 years later. We're still learning how to drive. We're still learning how to play chess. And we will the rest of our lives. And we're going to pass our faith on to another generation. And that generation is going to continue to try to live out that great commandment that Jesus gave to us as he ascended into heaven. But I love the way this gospel says that Jesus is working with us. Not so much, you know, putting us in his lap and m just making us think we're steering, right? <laughs> like Daddy did. But I like to think of Jesus as being in the car. Well, if we're smart, we let Jesus drive, right? And we ride shotgun. And Jesus takes us where he, his great, most Holy Spirit, need us to go. So that we can be where he needs us to be when he needs us to be there the most. But of course the challenge is that sometimes we think we know where we should be. We know what we should be doing. So we're not letting Jesus be in the driver's seat, we sit in the driver's seat 
and Jesus sits next to us riding the shotgun, trying to tell us, okay, t exit here, turn there. And again, if we're smart, we'll listen to Jesus. But sometimes our work and our worry, we put that in the seat next to us. We let our work and our worry, we let that be riding with us in the car shotgun, which means Jesus is sitting in in the back seat right but if any of you have ever experienced a really good solid back seat driver you know that from the back seat jesus can still give us direction can still help us find our way the key is to keep jesus at least in the car with us so when we're preaching it's not just our preaching it's Jesus working with us and through us. When we're doing good for others, it's not just us. It's literally the hands of our Lord reaching into their lives through our hands, right? We are the body of Christ at work in our world. We are his hands, his eyes, his ears, and we preach the good news for him, with him, and through him, he doesn't leave us abandoned, but he gives us this wonderful opportunity to drive the car, to continue to create the reality of the church. When the time comes and we get to heaven, we'll find out most likely where, uh, where we were supposed to. It's, it's an amazing thing for me to think sometimes that I'm just the latest generation of so many generations of believers who would have even imagined back when it was just the 11 disciples with Jesus and he was ascending into heaven, who would have ever believed among them that their work would one day literally fill the world with believers. So my dear friends, treasure the keys. Treasure the keys to the car that our Lord has given us to drive. Make sure he is in the car with you so that everywhere you go, everything you do, you do with him and through him. Jesus will be with us until the end of time. And next weekend on Pentecost, we celebrate that very special gift, the gift of his most Holy Spirit, the gift that gives us the strength and the grace that we need to keep figuring out where exactly it is he wants us to go with our lives, with our faith, with our future. So, happy Ascension Sunday. Good Lord willing and the crick don't rise. I'll be here with you next weekend as well. And for your homework, <laughs> I don't know how old you are. You might be very old. You might be very young. But uh, if you if you can't actually drive the car, you know, I think it'd be a great spiritual exercise to go driving somewhere this week and to try to remember those first days in driver's education. And if you're too young to drive, you can let mom or dad or your older brother or sister drive for you and just just imagine imagine going out going out in that car uh, being able to go where you believe you should be going right take the time to enjoy what it means to have the keys to the car take the time to enjoy what it means to be trusted with the car take the time to be in the car with our Lord. God bless and keep you all. Thank you so very much for joining me. Love you so very much. And I will look forward to being with you again next weekend.